that at first. I need you to turn on my Morgan Mystic side. It's round seven of Grand Prix Indianapolis 2012. It's day one, it's constructed, it's legacy. That is Tom Martel. And we are underway against Louis Scott Vargas. So, Sheldon, what is the matchup? We've already talked a little bit about Tom Martel with sort of Esper. What about Louis? Blue white stone, stone blade. blade. Yep. It's what many of it's what most of the the channel fireball team is playing. It's what many of the top pros are playing. It's a deck that it's a deck that wins games. It's a deck it, it's a deck that asks questions and forces you to answer them. So we see the um, LSV on. The brainstorm. What was that Stoneforge Mystic from Mr. Martel? There are forces of. So, Rashad Justin Report is, and then Gabriel Rashad Report, uh, point point last game. To the point when you're Saturday talking about force of will in three. multiples. Yes. Do you say two force of will or two forces of will? Uh, I go to Force of Will. He has two Force of Will in yep. hand because the card is Force of Will. Yep. He has one Force of Will. He has a second Force of Will. He has two Force of Will. Okay. Because it wouldn't be Force of Will, Wills, no. and, it, and wouldn't be Forces of Will. That no. would be the proper plural for. No, two Force of Will in hand. Definitely. Right. Two Grim Lava Mans in hand. Not two Grim Lava Mansers. When I played golf the other day, and I got a hole in one twice. You got two holes in one. That's right. But that's because hole in one isn't a proper name. That's true. Whereas, what's the name? You see the, the Click. Mishra's factory from LSB giving him the, the click to mm -hmm. take a good look at. That's a pretty spicy hand. <laughs> um, it's always jitty. <laughs> Lingering souls. Ponder, Swords to Plowshares, Stoneforge Mystic, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Up and. Ah. Yep, quite a lot going on there, that's fair to say. Tom's going to wait for Luis to write them all down. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Floyd, who signed up for Santa Water Box 10. Your event is waiting for you. Your side effects, Gabriel Floyd. Martel now pl planning out his line of play here. He's got a he, he knows that Luis knows what he has, so he's probably, he pr probably can't. So the Swords is going to take out the Renzillion quick. It seems perfectly fair. And then Stoneforge is actually going to attack. <laughs> did Tom not... Did Tom not draw? Yeah. Off the of Vendilia click? Yes, he did. Did he? Yeah. I think so. Good. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the tape on that. Yeah, good luck with that. We'll get, we'll get our crack staff to see if uh, we can look back. I, I, I may have turned my head. Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Louis Scott Vargas starts off at three. Is it going to stay at three? It is going to stay at three. Commonly known as Brainstorm without the Brainstorm card occurring. Again, I mean, I don't, I don't want to over hype a point. Brainstorming is difficult. Yeah. I don't think that's over hyping. 
fighting in at all. I think arguably, but for people who go out and get their set of brainstorms, it's arguably one of the, <laughs> the most miserable experiences that you go, I've got these lovely cars and I have no idea what to do with them. Well, Steve, when Steve Satan was talking to us, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was talking about guys like AJ Sacker writing tomes on how to brainstorm. Yep. And he, he, Steve said he thinks that they're still understating the difficulty of it. Sure. Honda from Martel to go with his pair of Stoneforge Mystics. Which certainly must battle in 10 case. You, you can't let you can't, you can't let LSV have Jace. And they're gonna they're gonna knock him down from three to one unless he I don't think he has anything equipped here, but So Jace the Mind Sculptor. Top ability, bait seal. Yep. Next ability, brainstorm. Next ability, unsummon. Yep. Does the ultimate have some weird exotic rare from Legends that is actually that card, or is that uniquely not a card? I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. Because if anyone would know, you would, because you have seen all the rares from the history of Magic <sighs> in Commander games, <laughs> pretty much. Nearly, nearly all. Of yeah, them. I'm sure well, there is some that don't make the card. Well, nobody plays one with nothing. Okay. And there's some of those. There's some of. There's a lot of creatures that were rares. Yeah, exile all cards from target player's library, then that player shuffles his or her hand into his or her library. I can't imagine that's a, an actual card somewhere. Doomsday? No. Doomsday, you, you get five cards <laughs> and you make them go off your library. You were entirely but, correct that the Stoneforge Mystic would turn sideways and aim at the Planeswalker, which they duly do. So Luis with four cards in hand and doesn't look like he's got a terribly exciting grip right now. He's got a couple of lands there. He's going to fate seal um, to push uh, Jace back up to three loyalty uh, and ensure that Jace will stay alive through the next attack from Stoneforge Mystic. He's going to run out another Vendemian click and this time he still sees all kinds of goodness. From the bottom up, Snapcaster Mage, Stoneforge Mystic, Badder Skull, Snapcaster Mage, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Omazawa's GT. Uh, Tom Martel's hands are a lot better than Luis's right now. There we go. Don't forget to draw. They heard you earlier. <laughs> they must have. Go. Vendillion click opposite double mystic, Jace at three. Luis basically just has a mana leak in hand. But he's got a jam this in play. Yeah. So. He certainly has. Yeah, I thought it was it. A lot of, oh, a lot of options. Can tell you that on the top table, Sam Black is currently six and zero, sitting next to David Sharpton. Not against each other, just beside each other. Martel goes finds another dual land. Booster draft number 12. And now his snap mage. And I'm going to go and get my sorts of plowshares. That will take out your Vendillion click. I will get to attack with both my Stoneforge. Your Jace is back at one. 
Martel in a super strong position this game. For all that Luis is at 23. It's just so far ahead, it's untrue. And there's a third stone forge missed to Quintan Martel's hand to go with Jason Zone. He's got a, yeah, and he's got a force now and as well. Of will. All kinds of shenanigans. On both sides. Oh. Another brainstorm there for Luis. Who apparently stated goal here at GP Indianapolis was to collect the all foil set of brainstorms. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Was that a was that a promo or was that just it's a or is because masks was was the big yes ne it was, it was near in, the beginning it of it was that in Mercedes and mask I think it has been a promo. Aaron Sproul Fritz, who's signed up for the TCG Player Bronze Legacy event, please report to the side event stage. Aaron Sproul Fritz, please report to the side event stage. It was a Friday Night Magic. Yeah. So first first came out in Ice Age, then mm -hmm. in 5th edition, Arcadian Masks. It's in the Beatdown box set. Right. Uh, Friday Night Magic. And in the Colts, it's in the Cold Snap, one of Cold Snap theme decks. And it's also, of course, made its way into the Commander Free Cons. Sure. So the F&M and the Arcadian Masks are the, the foil ones that he's got. So he's uh, still busy resolving, working out what he's going to keep, what's going to go back to the top. And Luis passes the turn with Snapcaster Mage, Man Leak, plus one. Martel draws a Thought Seize. So with six cards in hand, he can work with perfect information once again if he wishes to. And that's exactly what he wishes to. At least he wishes to try. Yeah. So Luis is going to mana leak that, and that's going to turn out to be notionally a hard counter, because right now Martel has been slightly squeezed on land, so it has just three, so can't pay three additional. So he, he may be giving some thought to that force of will, because Luis only has two cards left in his hand. Snapcaster Mage at us. Certainly contending with the Mistress Factory. We're gonna block Snapcaster Mage. And then I'll make pump, it bigger. And then pump itself. But he has succeeded in his goal to get rid of the Jace. Which Luis won't be desperately upset about on the basis that he has another lurking around. Yeah, that's it's gonna be upsetting to Tom who's wanted who wanted to cast his own. Yeah. That he's gonna yeah, does, does race Tom up have, to it. Yeah, does Tom have uh, a second blue card to go with his force? Uh, he's got another oh no, he played the Snapcaster. So let's see that hand, Tom Martell. Yeah, it was got his Jace. <laughs> yes. Not what I had in mind. <laughs> in, in, in truth, that, that's that's where the phrase Pyrrhic victory comes yeah. in so handy. Was that another? Was that a snap? Another Snapcaster is in? If he is going to force. Yes. Yeah, that is another Snapcaster. David Sharfman moves to seven and zero oh with Hive Mind. Great minds think alike, apparently. Martel is just not even off camera, Sheldon Mannery. <laughs> not even off camera. So no Jace. Shitty. Could see him stone for Mystic. Which allowed him to put it in 
at the end of turn. Yep. So he still has one. Well, he has a fetch land, yep. so he has the mana to activate the Mistress Factory. Oh, Grace, sure. So equip Jesse. Martel still no fourth land, so can't get his own Jace online. So now here comes Luis. Arid Mesa is going to sacrifice. Luis goes to 21. Out comes land. Activate. Put my guy in the way. So just as a review, whenever the creature equipped with Umazawa's GK deals that combat damage, yep. you put two charge counters on it, Okay. and then you can remove a charge counter from it and choose one. Either the equipped creature gets plus two, plus two till end of turn, okay. or a target creature gets minus one, minus one till end of turn, yep. or you can gain two life. I have a sneaking feeling that he chose option B. Luis makes another. And now we see a flooded strand in Tom Martel's hand, which means that finally he has reached his way to four mana. So his Martel's decision point here is with LSV with only one card in his hand, do I try to go for the Jace right now, or do I try to just press the GK advantage? Well, he lost to Stoneforge last turn, and he's now going to run one out, but Luis's card is Snapcaster. And that absence of a fourth land is really, really evening up the game, because Tom's had so much good stuff going on, he's going to force a will to Snapcaster. So there is Batterskull. Stoneforge Mystic. There is land number four. So, both players basically living off the top. Yeah, and Luis is like, yep. Yeah, I can't win this game. I, I, I'm done. All right, Tom Martell takes game one from Luis Scott Vargas in this battle of number ones, as it were. So, Tom Martell is. It's quite an interesting history in the game, particularly in terms of high-level magic right now. Obviously, there's Channel 5, mm -hmm. and in a linguistic sense, simply Channel 5, yeah, pretty easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Much harder to remember that there is this team of Zvi Moshevitz and John Finkel, and sometimes Patrick Chapin and Michael Jacob, and mostly Sam Black, and sometimes Gaudanis Vidagiris, and yeah, man, they, you know, we call them the the, the beat ones, the beach house ones, the, you know, and and so they don't they don't have a catchy title. And what's interesting, both these players are in Channel Five of tops. Tom Martel in Paris was officially part of Team Channel Five. Mm -hmm. um, and played down the stretch, and of course played in the top eight against Ben Starr mm -hmm. um, as, as teammates. Uh, once we get to Honolulu, um, Martel is playing on the other team, uh, as it were. So these are both simultaneously friends and former teammates and rivals, and yet still also kind of companions. It's a, it, th There's an interesting set of dynamics uh, going around, because one of the things the Fireball team talk about is, well, Brian Kibler only played the deck he played because he knew that ultimately 13 people who he knew and liked and knew were very good were going to play a deck that he couldn't beat with the deck he wanted to play. Right. So he had to meta game ultimately right. against the other 13 people he was staying with. Um, and, and so you get this kind of slightly strange thing and, and, and it links in with Star City of course mm -hmm. and that Brian Kibler is a Star City columnist, and yet he's on Team Channel Fireball, and they're both traders, and uh, so there's lots of wheels within wheels, and, and Tom Martel is a, an interesting example of someone who has been a, a foot in multiple camps right. over the last 12, 18 months, and 
still retains that. Like, say, here he is. He's in a Channel 5 all shirt, mm -hmm. having tested against them at the most recent Pro Shows, mm -hmm. if you will. Well, you see, the, you see the value of maintaining relationships in spite of other necessities. Yep. Good Tom Martell story while we're shuffling up. Yep. A few years ago at US Nationals in Kansas City. 2009? Yep. The Tom, uh, a gang led by Tom Martell, Phil Napoli, Osip Lebedovich were all a Twitter about playing this game called Catchphrase. Okay. So it was Catchphrase. There was Catchphrase, there was Catchphrase. All the pros, they got all the, you know, everybody excited was playing Catchphrase between rounds. And so at some point, he says, get a judge team together. We'll, we'll beat you at Catchphrase. I said, I said, and. BDM is sitting right there. I said, can I have BDM on my team? He's like, sure. Like I, it doesn't matter. And I said, so Toby's judge, take Toby Elliott, double wide judge. How about Scott Larrabee? Can I have Scott Larrabee? He's like, sure. So we sent in this 4v4 configuration, and we get the catchphrase thing to start. And BDM happens to be the one at hand that has it in his hands. Turns it on, he and he looks directly at me. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't throw it out of the team. He looks directly. He says, "Margaret Atwood." It's like Handmaiden's Tale, and I and we see the four heads of Osip and Tom oh. Martell face plant <laughs> into the table, knowing it's over. <laughs> it's over, boys and girls. Thanks for trying. Thanks for playing. Turn one, Belchie. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Atwood, Handmaiden's Tale. Only one land in this deck, my friends. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. yeah, I think we, I think we sharked. I think we sharked the sharks. Excellent. <laughs> All right, we're back at. Oh. Oh, it's the hand grenade card. So we're gonna have to get a report from the four on which of the nineteen and a half thousand cards <laughs> <that you laughs> <should> have <laughs> the What meddling mage is naming? Lingering souls. Lingering souls. That turns out to be a good play because I believe. Martel has a link of souls sitting there. You're wrong. It looked like he had one. Nice old school disenchant. Yeah, so really. I love that, that picture. Yes, it's very nice. It's got like a mirage vision of a light Big era, game. I think. Ish. Somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah, it's certainly. Properly a go. So go and get Batter Skull, says Martel. Luis, turn three, has a Stoneforge Mystic of his own, or. May have a Stoneforge Mystic of his own. Martel has a quick look at his hand, says either I will not be forcing or cannot force. And Batter Skull for Luis. Head back to Martel. Sam Black still playing at 6 0. We'll bring you uh, all the news of who is currently 6 0. We've got the, the standings, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait until either the end of the game or the round. That's the Ice Age disenchant. Ah, good. I wasn't far off time timeline wise. So Mystics on both sides, Batter Skulls in both hands. No lingering souls for you, says Mr. Medley Mage. And Martel is going to pass the turn with three men are open. Wasteland is a card in this format. In the biggest way. There is the Bat Skull uh, from Martin. The Magic players from the Sealed 1K event. And Welcome back to round turn. number four. There's Luis. You have 50 minutes and you may begin. And there's Wasteland to put Tom back to two mana. And really importantly for Tom, no white. Yep. No swords to plowshares. No disenchant. Currently no lingering souls. Uh, looks like a flooded strand in his hand, though. Okay. Upgrade. 
Yep, correct. Flow it strand. As we close in on 7 o'clock here on the first evening of Grand Prix Indianapolis 2012 with Rich Hayden, Sheldon Mannery, bringing you all the legacy action. And he's playing up Stone Forge. Probably a GK, not a batter stole this time. I imagine, I, I suspect he only has one of each uh, floating around, I think I saw. Certainly one batter skull main, one jetty main. Does he have any more to bring in? He can go and get a sort of piece of famine out of the board, theoretically. If he, if, if, if that's, you know, if that was his thing, but... And we're highly... Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> wow. yep. Turns out, sort of pieced in there. I mean, there's... There's... The sort of fire and ice, which is identical to the card fire ice. Okay. There's actually a card from Alliance. It's called Feast and Famine. Oh. It's nothing. Like it. It's nothing. Like it. I'm, I'm guessing Feast and Famine is a little more underpowered. <laughs> yes. It. It's a it's a modal instant that you can either put a, for four mana, you can either put a zombie, a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, or you can terror a creature. For four mana. Yeah. Yeah, not as powerful. So Martel, Bata Skulda, double mystic. Scott Marv, his meddling mage sets a lingering souls, his own batter skull. And now, Stoneforge Mystic activating, Martel says. Exercise. <laughs> Ruiz untaps. And will send Mr. Batter Skull in, which is vigilant. How many what? for the score packs. I believe that is correct. It is. Not even in Venezuela. Sword. So that correct is potentially a bit timely. <laughs> Feast of Look. Famine has, <laughs> has protection from black and green. The black being the relevant part here. Uh -huh. With LSV's germ token. So Lingering Souls is now live for Martel uh, with the demise of Meddling Mage. Strand from our town. So again, like Luis, doesn't have a lot of excitement going on. He's got five cards, which you know seems, oh, it must have stuff going on, but he doesn't think he does. He's got a Wrath of God. Which he's probably going to have to which wouldn't try be, to play next turn. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be awful if, if he could get that to resolve. But, but unfortunately for him, we, we saw the natural counterspell in Martel's hand. Yes, and by counterspell you mean counterspell. counterspell. <laughs> we may well be about to see. Of course, LSV with like that. two mana up. Has mana, well, spell pierce. It has spell pierce. Tom Martel looks at his hand. Mm. 
more battles and then sweep up the permanents. So the good now, news for Tom Martell is he still has his two, his two equipment. Yes. And lingering souls. Uh-huh. Steve Sainan falls to five and two. Means he has to win out. Which always sets the pulse racing once you hit the win and ends. I actually, I actually think at that point I relax. Sure. It's it's if I'm seven and zero oh is when I think the the, the oh. pulse starts racing because now oh, really? you're not just dreaming a day two. You're you're thinking about positioning yourself for the long run. Oh, okay. You break. You have raised your own stakes at seven. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, X two is like, yeah. Got to win. So lingering souls was backed up by lingering souls. Now here's Inquisition. Luis will reveal swords to plow the chest. Magic player wins the world. championship. Prelims, uh, final standings are now being posted. These, these are the final standings. Is the source of all that danger still right here? I'll take yours. Yours. Uh, I think at 28. The key thing is he's just, he's just got them. More that lingering souls. Sure. Whips. And smash. Now remember when that when that token connects is going to untap all the plans. Comes the army again. Well, he's certainly discarded. He yes. discarded the Crucible of Worlds. Tom Martell, despite the 10 life difference, looks to be well into the driver's seat here. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the 10 life difference went as we yes. said it. That's it. Hands extended. Respect that, just that. Tom Martell, like really two zero yeah, over Luis Scott Vargas. So we might see if we can get a chat with Tom Martell. Looks to me like Sam Black is also done uh, with with his match. May still be uh, going on. So we'll see if we can get one of those two in. Josh Otter Layton uh, just wandering by in the background. There. 